today I'm on the roof. I'm going to try and seal it the best I can. Uh, I shall be putting the slates on. I certainly hope you'll be putting the underlay on. Uh, but what I want to talk about just now is safety and if you could do some roofing of any kind, get yourself hoys. Um, I'm lucky enough to have all this stuff here from my days when I used to do ski seasons back in the 1990s. Um, I used to go to Chamonix and anyone who's been to Chamonix in France will know it's all about the off-piste. It's all about the climbing and some of the um, more out of the way places where you can do some tremendous skiing. Probably the best place in the world for off piste skiing. But anyway, that's another issue. Let's talk about the harness. If I do fall, I'll be roped up to the joists, but I've threaded through the roof. So if I do fall or slip, I shan't go anywhere. You need two or three carabiners. These are carabiners. A good harness, um, try and get the, the more comfortable one because if you do fall, it'll grab you in the crotch and it's quite painful. Um, a rope, a good rope, and a little mechanism I'm going to use today. It's a little ratchet, I'll show you that in a minute. I've got a roller here that helps the, uh, the rope to move frictionless without grabbing. I shan't be using that today because I'm only on a roof. But I'll show you this little ratchet now. So if I do slip, it'll prevent me from slipping down. But at the same time, if I want to move up, I can release the ratchet and move up upwards on the rope. So there's the ratchet. The holes just here fit inside the carabiner. And you'll see a little man just there can you see where my little dinky finger is that means he's the right way up so basically i'm going to pull down that can't go down but if i pull this little lever here it releases the ratchet and that will move can move up so that's your safety device so it's not just a matter of a harness and rope you need the kit as well okay so up to the roof i'm going to put some silicon uh, just along that ridge it rained a little bit yesterday and it did leak in so i'm going to completely seal that ridge now um to be honest that ridge there didn't leak that bad it was in between the cladding where there's one or two notches but anyway i'm going to completely seal that with some weatherproof sealant and then down each corner i'm going to be put putting some flashing tape once i've done the flashing tape I'll be putting the rain directors on the edge of the roof, the plastic rain directors, to prevent the edge of the roof from rotting away. And once I've done that, hopefully the last thing today, I'll be putting the underlay down. So if it does rain tomorrow, and it is forecast, that roof should be pretty much protected. So I've got a lot of work on, and I've got to work pretty quick. So what I'm going to do now is just seal those temporary gaps um, I've put waterproof sealant down the, um, down the edges of each corner of the roof and then what I've done, once I've put that sealant on, is just put some temporary tape. It's simply duct tape. Now duct tape is not a flash band. It's just temporary so if it does rain at least it'll stop the rain coming inside the building. The actual waterproof sealant will seal it as that dries. So that's just temporary and this is the duct tape just here and I'll show you where I put that now. Okay I've just zoomed in so I'm not sure the quality of the video but you can see the tape down each corner of the roof and then right at the top there where I've actually split the roof cladding I've put the sealant in between each joint and then put the duct tape over the top of it. It's starting to split a bit now, uh, rain-wise, so hopefully that will prevent the rain getting inside. And on the other side, I've done similar, just over there. Now, the only part I'm going to put proper flash band is right at the top there on the ridge. And the first thing you do is to use a paint to create more adhesive. And that's it, it's a primer. So I've put the primer around 150 mil either side of that ridge, mainly on the roof, 
and then underneath I've got the flash band and that will create a permanent seal so on top of that ridge I've already sealed it underneath and there you can see where that sealer is it's a sealing a strip of wood behind that I've got sealant so that helps to seal that ridge anyway and then on top of the ridge down where the roof cladding meets the ridge that's the ridge is a brown bit I've put waterproof sealant in between there and now what I'm going to do so uh, is to put that Bostic flash band now the prime is a black paint that you can see there and so I've got about 25 30 mil on the ridge and about 100 mil down on the roof itself so that should be totally sealed um, I've got a seal underneath the cladding inside there as I've just shown you there we are that's the unpainted part between the ridge and the roof that's water and beyond the, uh, the water is waterproof sealant then directly where the roof cladding meets the ridge I've put a bead of waterproof sealant right the way along now once that's dried I've put that primer the flash band primer on then I'm going to put proper flash band tape on and that should completely seal that roof bear in mind on top of that I'm then going to put the underlay and then another layer of flash band Previous to this video, what I've actually done is fitted some felt supports uh, to the roof. Now, I'm not going to take you through how I fitted them. There's plenty of online videos there to show you how to do it anyway. Uh, sufficient to say I've already fitted them. So what the next stage is, is just to tidy them up. These particular felt supports are plastic. I know it's not ideal, but my main concern was to ensure that when it does rain, even with tiles fitted, eventually that wood underneath there would rot away. Yes, I know it's treated wood, but the felt supports are designed to prevent the rain creeping back up into the wood and rotting it away. So I've fitted them anyway, and I will attempt to disguise them to a certain degree. But anyway, essentially what happens is the rain drips down here and it will attempt to crawl back up here but you've got a little ridge there initially it'll drip down there so it still won't hit the wood and if it creeps back up there you've got another little ridge there and again it'll drip off so the rain will drip away before it actually hits the wood which is just here that's where the wooden cladding will be but the, the rain should not hit it at all the fault itself or the underlay roof underlay sits on the top and just rests just down to there so i'm just going to tidy these up on the roof where the joins are and i'm basically going to use felting tape just to join them together and make them more secure and tidy them up a little bit so this is the felt tape i'm just going to cut little sections off and just join together the felt support one there one just there and around each corner i've applied a flash band primer down each corner of the roof and the next stage will just be to apply the flash band itself Thanks to Amazon. So the way this is applied is you peel away the backing tape 
and then the sticky side goes onto the priming paint. Ratchets, carabiner. So now I've flashed all the corners, I'm now going to put the roof underlay on. Um, this particular membrane is called Socket and it's a completely waterproof membrane. Uh, I don't need it to be breathable, um, there's no insulation in there or anything. So I'm more concerned that this roof is completely waterproof. So I've started the underlay, as you can see I've got the roll there, there's a downside and an upside to it. And as you unroll it, um, the downside will automatically go to the lower side. So that's the first side up anyway. 
So the roof under lays down, I've decided to tape it uh, with duct tape. Um, it didn't really need it, but I've tried it and the duct tape, to be quite frank, is lifting. So, well, makes no difference. Um, the important thing is that the flashing tape is down and that certainly hasn't lifted. I just thought I'd, where the seams are for the underlay, I just thought I'd tape it down. Not that it actually needs it. Uh, the weight of the, um, the slate itself will hold everything down after anyway. So I'll just rub, it, rub my fingers over it again, see if it does stick, but I don't hold up any oaks. Duct tape, that's as good as it says. So I'm going to put the underlay now on the front side of the tea house and do that. Hopefully I can get all this done today, ready to start the tiling before, well, I don't know. It's due to rain um, the next few days, so whether or not I'll start to slate it just now, I don't know. As long as I get this underlay down, that's all that matters. That should keep it pretty much waterproof anyway. All that I need to do now is just to put some flashing around the edge of the curve either side. I'll completely seal the underlay. So that's the roof underlay pretty much fitted now. And the next step is going to be fitting the slate. I've sourced Spanish slate and by the time that's been laid um, that roof should be completely waterproof and I'm also hoping that it looks the part time will tell. One thing I didn't mention right at the end there you could probably see some duct tape um, little squares over the roof underlay uh, that's where I'd actually stapled uh, the underlay to the roof clad cladding so I wanted to protect um, the wood just underneath to prevent any vapour or water getting past those little staples I doubt it would but I've um, I decided to put the duct tape on top just to give it a little bit of protection so that's just for those who were wondering why I put those little square duct tape patches on anyway until the next video, have a good one, enjoy yourselves and um, have a good one.